compelling message, resume, so you can impact your target audience. This live stream webinar, Resume Writing Masterclass, is the one for you. You don't want to miss this. Come on back. It's Nez Nation prime time, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Thursday Night Primetime Nez Nation Live. It is I, Professor Nez, your executive career coach, your live stream content creating machine, business owner, actual business communications professor. It is so good to see you guys. Come on in, come on in. Welcome to the stream. Make sure that you let me know where you're joining me from. Let me know where you are seeing this. We are live on LinkedIn, we're live on YouTube, we're live on Periscope, we're live on Facebook, we're live on Twitch. You don't want to miss this uh, stream today, guys. This one is going to be a, I mean, it's going to be brain-busting content for you today. If you're wondering at all how to create a compelling message in the 21st century, this is the show for you because I'm going to share with you some unbelievably applicable strategies and tips today. It's not just for your resume, even though the focus uh, is the resume, being an executive career coach for LinkedIn and a business communications professor for over 25 years. Uh, I, I can't wait to share with you this unbelievable content that is going to help you. Uh, before we get into it, though, hey, Don, good to see you over there on LinkedIn. Nice to see you. Uh, before we get into it, I want to introduce you to who I am, just in case you're new to my channel, just in case you're new to our show, the Nez Nation Live Personal Branding 101 podcast live stream show. We were going live usually, uh, our normally regular scheduled time it was on Sundays in the afternoons, and this is the first time that I've gone live in prime time in a really, really long time. Um, we've been doing some digging, we've been doing some research and, you know, just experimenting really. Uh, and we found that, uh, you know, the weekends weren't working well, not only for my schedule, but for a lot of you guys too. I was, I was hearing, I was heeding your call. I was heeding your message and, uh, you know, we're going to try it out, uh, on a prime time schedule. This could be the brand new time that we go live Thursdays between, uh, five and 6 PM Pacific. That would be uh, 9 and 8 Eastern time. And so uh, we're really, really excited to have you. And we're so pumped to come right here into prime time, uh, especially in our multicast show. If you don't know what this show is all about, I am a business communications professor. I own an agency, a uh, personal branding consulting agency where we help people with their LinkedIn. We help people with their resume. We help people with their branding, their online reputation, so they can elevate their career and elevate their business. It's all about mindset. It starts right here. You got to get your mindset right before you get anything else right. And then after you get that right, after you discover your core essentiality and your purpose, then it's about communicating that to the world because nobody knows who you are. They got to know who you are. People have to be aware of you. We're in a day and age now where communicating your purpose is even more important, even more significant. And even though people like to call these the soft skills, I call them the essential skills. There's nothing soft about these skills. These are the skills that are going to take you to the next level in your business and your career. So we are helping you to discover your purpose, communicate your message so you can impact your audience. That's what I'm all about. And today is kind of a new one. 
you know, even though I'm an executive career coach and I actually work for LinkedIn, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Some of my clients might be watching this on the replay or watching this live. Uh, yes, you can hear me on Alexa, Don. You should be able to, although that would be the podcast form. And right now it's the live stream show. This is a great question. Thank you, Don. Right now, this is the live stream show, but this will eventually, I'll turn this into a podcast episode. So Don, the cool thing for you, you're going to love this, is where if whether you're on iTunes, whether you're on Spotify or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever, make sure that you click, okay, search for Nez Nation Live. That's my hashtag. And if you're on LinkedIn, by the way, follow the hashtag Nez Nation if you want to learn everything about building a powerful personal brand that gets your career in the right place and grows your business and reaches the right customers and clients. So if you search for Nez Nation Live, Don, whatever podcast you listen to, Alexa, we're on Alexa as well. Make sure you subscribe to it. And when I do turn this into a podcast episode, which will be very, very soon, Oh, you're going to love it, Don. I've got I've got so much unbelievable content that is going to absolutely drop wisdom grenades in your skull. You're going to love it. Everything about mindset and messaging, everything about compelling, craft, purposeful, you know, conveyances that get people to take action. It all starts with this dude right here. You got to know how to communicate that. It's one thing to have a two-dimensional context, which I'm going to talk about the resume in a second. And really LinkedIn is everything now for, for business and for your career. And now that we've got LinkedIn live, holy macadamia nut, it just gets better and better. But uh, it's extremely important that you understand how to communicate in a three-dimensional context. So, you know, I, I have a little, you know, title card here, Master Your Message. Even though the title of this stream and the title of this podcast video is Resume Writing Masterclass, everything that you're going to learn today, you're going to be able to apply to all of your messaging, to both your written communications and your oral communications. Whether you're a public speaker, or maybe you're a VP of marketing, or you have a staff, or you're upper management, C-suite executive, the actual tangible tips and strategies that I'm going to share with you today are universally, comprehensively applicable and they apply in every context. So I can't wait to get cooking with this. I'll take your questions. If you have a lot of questions, I'll take your questions at the end. You know, I like to keep things very loose and I don't try to keep things very rigid. So do me a favor, make sure you share this out. If you know somebody who could use help in mastering their message, make sure that you share this out. Let's see who's here on YouTube. Modern Day Tech. Good to see you, Modern Day Tech. Eric, how are you? It's good to see you. We got Don on LinkedIn. We got Luis in the house, my main mod. How you doing, Luis? It is so good to see you. Make sure you smash that smash button. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It's so awesome to see you guys here. Uh, and make sure you share this out because you're going to love this. We've got Don over on LinkedIn and we are live on Periscope and we're live on Twitch and Facebook as well. So let me know if you're in the chat, let me know. I'm monitoring the comments. Let me know uh, if you have anything to add to these tips, if you have anything to add to the conversation, contribute. I am paying very, very close attention. So let me know. You wanna share this out immediately. Get this out there because sharing, we all know this, sharing is caring. Yes, indeed. So really, really important. And here's another thing too that I want to drop on you guys. You know, my content is all about personal branding. I've said this a million times and I'm going to say it again just because I know sometimes we get new people in here and it's worth repeating because we forget things very easily. Personal branding sounds like a fancy schmancy word, but really all it means is 21st century communications. It's not about logos. It's not about website banners. It's not about cool font styles and, uh, you know, graphics and design and things of that nature, even though that's a part of it, it's a small part of it. Who are you? Why am I paying attention to you? And what problem can you solve for me? This relates to resumes. This relates to your reports. This relates to your speeches. This relates to your sales pitches, your landing pages, your advertising campaigns, your, your digital marketing campaigns, your Facebook ads. This relates to all of the type of conveyances that your company organization, and by the way, I tell this to all my clients, 
um, one, you know, kind of bonus tip, if you will, because it's really important that you get this understanding of what the audience wants. You have to serve your audience. It's critical, mission critical, that you understand what your audience wants. Like my man Dale Carnegie said a long time ago, the great steel baron, nobody cares about you. You have to make them care about you. And the only reason you're going to, only way you're going to make them care about you is if you somehow communicate a impactful message that hits them where they really, where it matters most to them. Mostly, sometimes these are called pain points or emotional kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, emotional uh, uh, feelings, wants, desires, challenges, obstacles that your audience is facing. So it's extremely important that you understand serving your audience is tantamount to your success. Now, for people who are, you know, in business or people who are trying to grow their business, entrepreneurs, startups, or maybe you're an SMB or you've been in business for a very long time, this is going to apply to you. You already know this one, but this one I want to really share with my peeps who are out there trying to get a new gig, who are out there trying to grind it out, trying to search, trying to apply everywhere, trying to write a resume, trying to write a LinkedIn profile that's going to take them to the next level. I want you to do this. This is going to be a huge transformative tip. I wasn't even actually thinking of including this one. I mean, this is a bonus tip right off the bat. I mean, you're going to be able to use this today, not tomorrow, not next week, today. Don't think of yourself as an employee candidate. Get your mind around this. This is huge. Don't think of yourself as an employee candidate looking for employment. Think of yourself as a business of one selling your services for fair compensation. I'm going to repeat that because it's huge. Don't think of yourself as just an employee looking for employment or a potential candidate looking for employment. Think of yourself as a business of one. Entrepreneurs and business owners, you get this. But it's my, it's my career-minded folk. It's my job seekers out there. It's my job hunters out there. Uh, it's, my, it's my clients, my future clients, my potential clients out there who are looking to elevate their career. You have to wrap your mind around this. Think of yourself as a business of one selling your services to a company or organization for fair compensation. When you do that, when you shift your mindset around that very, very poignant kind of strategy, watch what happens. You're going to start communicating inflamed with a whole new purpose. You're going to start communicating in a way that reaches into your audience's psyche, reaches into your audience's pain points, wants, desires, challenges. This is so good that I'm starting off with this. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is so good. You're going to want to watch this and listen to this on repeat, and you're going to want to pause this you're going to want to take notes. I'm so glad this is being recorded. If you follow our Nez Nation hashtag on LinkedIn, uh, you definitely uh, will get uh, all the latest content that I'm going to produce. I produce content on a weekly basis, sometimes daily basis, sometimes insanely on, a, on an hourly basis. My man Brad Friedman knows what that's all about. Good to see you, Brad. How are you, sir? Brad is an amazing digital marketer. He has an amazing uh, uh, company where he provides great marketing services. Uh, it's good to see you, Brad. Make sure you share this out, please, because sharing is caring. This is, this is huge. If you think of yourself as a business of one and you hit them with their challenges and you hit them with their pain points, then the focus is off of what I get, what I get paid, what's my benefits, what's my vacation, what's my, uh, uh, you know, where's my office, where's my, where do, what do I, 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 you got to get that type of thinking out of your noggin ASAP. And you, and you transmogrify that to what do they want and how can what I do serve them? You have to understand something. Please write this down. I'm begging you to write this down. You have to understand a, nobody cares about you. You have to make them care about you. And B, the only reason anybody is taking the time out to even look at your resume, the only reason anybody is taking time out of their busy, busy, busy schedule, there's no such thing as an unbusy professional nowadays, even un, non-professionals, or I don't even know what the hell that means. Everybody's busy. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> 
Everybody and their mother is busy. So you have to respect their time. Time is the ultimate currency right now. We cannot buy enough of it and we can't get a refund for our time. So time is the ultimate commodity, not, not money. Time is the ultimate commodity. The only reason they're even looking at you, the only reason they're even barely glimpsing your resume, and I'm going to talk about this later, is because they have a headache. They have a headache. You need to be their excedrin. They have a headache. They need to fill a role. Somebody is leaving or somebody just got, you know, the, or whatever. They need to fill a position. That's a headache. That's a problem. Are you going to be the one who's going to be able to solve it? Same thing in business, whether you're selling a product or service, okay? Nobody is, you know, nobody is going to the gas station for kicks and giggles. No, nobody is. Nobody's going to Chevron because they love their branding or they love their, their logo or their colors appeal to them. I mean, there may be a little bit of that, but it's because I need gas or I can't get to where I need to go. That's a problem. Chevron solves that problem. I mean, and I could, the, the examples are endless, right? We're not buying toilet paper for kicks and giggles because it solves a problem. I've got a problem, okay? And I need toilet paper to help me with that problem, okay? I've got bad breath. I'm not buying these mints, okay? And there's nuances, right? You might buy this brand over that brand, but, you know, the, the, the premise at the fundamental level, it solves a problem. I've got bad breath. I need that problem challenge to be solved, and here comes Tic Tacs to the rescue. Does this make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. In the, because this is, this is the fundamental for mastering your message. This is the absolute fundamental basis for mastering your message. How are you doing over there on YouTube? Let me know. Ten. I'm going to give you ten tips today. Ten tips today that are going to absolutely blow your noggin into two pieces. Not literally, <laughs> but in a good way. It's going to absolutely, yeah, isn't that a good word? Max Palma in the house, good to see you. Max, we need to talk. Max, I need to work with you. I need to help you. There's nobody better than me, Max. I can help you better than anybody. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us on the stream. Uh, make sure you share this out. So, so, and make sure you follow the hashtag Nez Nation. If you're on YouTube, if you want to get the best videos, the best content that's going to help you with your mindset and messaging, you got to click that subscribe button. Uh, and oh yes, and, and really quickly, I forgot, I wanted to mention this. You know, being somebody who's been a business communications professor, you know, I own my own agency, which helps people with their branding and messaging, companies and organizations. Uh, I want to I want to do a new series. I've already got a, a, a kind of flow chart of video ideas, which are based on your questions. Look, I'm doing exactly what I just said. I'm exemplifying that in real time, three dimensionally. I am listening to my audience. These are questions that I received from my audience. You guys, Nez Nation, our awesome Nez Nation family. We're bringing more humanness to this digitalness. That is our mission statement, bringing more humanness to this digitalness, our Nez Nation family. I would love for you to be a part of our Nez Nation family. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a series on this very topic uh, and related to resumes and related to crafting a business conveyance that encapsulates you and encapsulates your audience and gets you to where you need to go. Uh, and so I've already got about four or five video ideas I don't know if I'm going to do them as live streams or as pre-recorded videos, but I would love to I would love to get your thoughts on this. If that's something that would really really intrigue you, would really really interest you, let me know in the comments down below. And also feel free to message me at, you know, on LinkedIn you can message me or just email me at nez@professornez.com. At so if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me at nez@professornez.com, at okay? Uh, and I would love to hear from you because I aim to serve you. If I am doing my job correctly, if I am being completely honest, I need to practice what I preach. And so I am dying to serve you. And that's my goal. So let me know what you think. I'm thinking about doing a series. We're talking like five to 10 videos over the next couple of you know months on different facets uh, of resume mastery. 
The tips that I'm going to give you today are more macro, although they're extremely, extremely tangible and concrete. And I'm ready to jump into it. Who's ready to jump into the 10 best tips, the 10 best tips based on my 28 years of experience and conferring with some of the best hiring managers at the best Fortune 500 companies. I've done a lot of research for this show. 10 best tips. They're coming at you right now. Let me know in the chat if you're ready for those tips. Let me know. I want to see I want to see some creative emojis. I want to see some fun emojis in the chat. Let me know if you're ready for the 10 best tips to writing the perfect resume template. That's what I want to see. I want to see some oh, who's ready? Who's ready for the 10 best tips? I want to see something in the, I want to see some some emojis. Hey, Trapper. Trapper over on Twitch. Yes, I think so. Let me pinch myself. Yes, I think I am. <laughs> who's ready for the 10 best tips to creating a master resume that gets you the gig of your dreams? Who's ready? I want to see some emojis. Jumping now, Don. It's so good to see you, Don. And Don, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you say that you were in Vegas? Oh, I love Vegas. My wife and I love going to the Venetian when we can, you know, when my mother-in-law will watch the kids. It's so, I love Vegas. I have such a good time in Vegas. Thank you so much, Don. Okay, Don is ready. Jason is in the house. Jason E. Clement. How are you, Jason? It's so good to see you. Thank you, Jason. Jason is a client of mine. Great to see you, Jason. Come on in. Come on in. Fantastic. Oh, look who finally made it to the dance. It looks like Charlie Dog is here. Midnight Madness. How in the world are you, Charlie Dog? How in the world are you? Again, if you're coming in late, if you're coming in late, if you look at the, you know, if you look at the premise of the show, master your message. If you look at the premise of the show, even though the title is Resume Writing Masterclass, 10 concrete tips that you can use today, today, not tomorrow, not a week from now, not a month from now, today. And I'm also going to give you one tip that I disagree with. So there really there's 10 awesome tips and then one huge mistake. And I posted something recently about this and uh, I can't wait to get into that one too. So stick around to the end because I'm going to let you know most of you guys have gotten this piece of advice from so-called career experts, strategists, recruiters, what have you, and I'm going to debunk it. I'm going to completely go against the grain and I'm going to say how much I disagree with uh, uh, this piece of advice. So stick around to the end. I'm going to give you 10 rock solid superstar resume mastery tips. And then I'm going to basically contradict the most popular piece of advice that's given out to you guys that I think is a detriment and is getting in your way as an impeding your success. Okay. So let's get right into it. It looks like we are ready to get into it. And here we go. So here's the first one. Here is the first one. Local economy, absolutely. Here is the first one. So the first resume tip, I'm going to jump right into it, is be concise and don't be afraid to really highlight your achievements. You know, a lot of people, this is really a mindset thing too. A lot of people actually feel that, you know, ah, you know, I feel like I'm showing off or I feel like I'm, you know, they, and it's natural. You're a human being. I get it. But if there's one place that warrants self-promotion, if there's one place that, you know, it's the most appropriate to quote unquote brag, it's on your resume. And, and I see so many people are reticent to do this. So many people want to be understated and humble. I get that. That's a beautiful thing. That means you're a good human being. But this is not the time for humility. This is not the time to be sheepish. Maybe humility is not even the right word. It's really being apprehensive and, sh and not demonstrating, you know, what can you do? What are your accomplishments? Okay, nobody cares about your responsibilities. As a matter of fact, here's another bonus tip. My God, am I just dropping wisdom grenades or what? I'm going to go ahead and give you another bonus tip. Please never, ever use the phrase on your resume, responsible for. Responsible for is the most antiquated phrase on the planet, and it does nothing to communicate your value. 
It does absolutely goose egg to communicate your value. Meaning nada. Hasta la pasta. See ya. Wouldn't want to be it. Do not ever use that as a bullet point, as any talking point or highlight on your resume responsible for. It's just, it's so, it's a red flag and the ATS scanners pick up on that immediately. It is bad boogie. So do not ever say responsible for. Um, Edward Mitten says, can you give me advice for my exams on Twitch? Uh, not right now, but if you message me, uh, I can get to that later. So let me know later. It's not really relevant to this discussion, but uh, you know, send me a message uh, later and I'll, I'll definitely try to help you as best as I can. No problem, my friend. Absolutely. Be concise. The biggest problem, the biggest mistake that I see is when people describe their job description or describe what they do, we've got run-on sentences. We've got sentences that are almost impossible to read. Um, it's like all of a sudden William Shakespeare shows up and there's all these adverbs and unnecessary adjectives. You want to be very, very concise. You want to be very, very succinct. And don't be afraid to brag. You need to have an accomplishment oriented resume. I'm going to talk about that in more detail later, but I want to get through this mindset thing. You got to be confident. You got to speak with conviction. You got to communicate with authority. It is the time to show them. They see a million and six resumes a day. If you have this run of the mill, general sheepish vagary of a document, you're not ever going to see the light of day. So be very, very concise Edit, 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 keep it small, keep it tight. Nobody has time to read resumes and don't be afraid to show your best stuff. Don't be afraid of your unbelievable accomplishments. So many people, they refuse to list that and that is going to be a detriment to your job search. So that's number one. Number two, who's ready for number two? I want to see something in the, in the, in the chat. I want to see some emojis in the chat. Have you guys shared this out? Have you guys shared this out? Good to see you, Midnight Madness. I know you've been lurking. Fantastic. Good to see you, my friend. It's always good to see you. Hopefully, you smash the smash button. It's great to see you right now. Okay, who's ready for number two? Let me see an emoji in the chat if you're ready for number two. Number two, and again, this relates to, I mean, this is, this is on a holistic macro level, this relates to, you can really apply all of this stuff, okay, because number two really, actually number one, two, and three really relate, are, are very interrelated. I mean, they're, they're extremely interrelated. And so um, this, if you really look at this with the right pair of eyes, you'll see a common thread. There's a common denominator amongst all of these tips. And I'll share that with you in just a second. But what I'm trying to say is don't think, well, I don't need any resume help, so I don't need to watch this. I don't need to listen to this. You'll be amazed because the way that you really get anything you want in your career, in your business, in your life, if you're a content creator, uh, even if you're just doing things for fun, your personal life, oh my God, your personal life, you have to communicate in a way that understands your audience, communicates what value you bring, and you need to really respect people's time and respect the fact that they're giving you their attention. You need to deliver the goods. You gotta deliver the goods, respect people's time. Time is the most invaluable resource on planet Earth in the 21st century, and it's slipping away. Seconds are being murdered as we speak. Seconds are being murdered as we speak. I'm not saying that to depress you. I'm saying that to ignite you, to light fire in your belly. It's time to get things cooking. It's time to do what you've always wanted to do. It's time to make a change. It's time to actually apply something that's been burning in your chest for years, but you've been too lazy to cash in on it. This is the time. And I hope to inspire you. I hope to inspire you. Chris Galvin in the house. Good to see you. He says, let's hear it. First timer, ready for more. Jessica Ruiz, so great to have you with us on LinkedIn. Okay, number two. These are all interrelated. Keep your resume to just one or two pages. Now, 
I am not, so that's number two. Keep your resume to a bare a maximum of two pages. I'm a huge fan of the one page resume. Uh, but, you know, and I try with all my clients to get everything down into one page. Uh, but it's not the end of the world if you go into two. It's not the end of the world if you go into two. And what this really, you know, kind of, um, you know, points to or what what the real underlying kind of truth to this tip is, is that only relevant information, that's all they want to see. And they don't want to see, they want to see not only relevant information, but they want to see recent experience, recent information. So the two R's, R&R, relevancy and recency. I have actually had clients, I'm not even kidding you. I have actually had clients you know, you know, hand me their resume, you know, they've hired, they've contracted my services. Okay. And in their resume, they've got jobs that go all the way back to the fifties and sixties. And that is a huge, huge no, no. Okay. Nobody cares that you were a paper boy in 1957. I'm sorry. That might be something cool that you bring up in conversation, but not in a two dimensional context. You guys, you need to understand this. What you put in a two-dimensional context needs to be tight, concise, actionable, relevant, and recent. You, can, you don't elaborate in a two-dimensional context. Remember this. This is everything. You do not elaborate in a two-dimensional context, i.e. resume or LinkedIn. You elaborate in a three-dimensional context when you're face-to-face. So your resume, your bullet points, your info, your conveyance, your value proposition needs to inspire more discourse. It needs to compel them. It needs to compel them to reach out to you. This is called curiosity marketing. This is called curiosity marketing. So you don't elaborate in a two-dimensional context. Let me know if that makes sense. I'm happy to elaborate on that. <laughs> Let me know if that makes sense. I'm serious. This is everything. So many of you, you want to put everything, you want to impregnate your resume with everything under the sun. Only the relevant and recent. I think eight to 10 years is all you need, okay? And you want to wet their beak a little bit. You want to, you want to keep them, pique their curiosity. Pique their curiosity. Get them wanting more. Always leave them wanting more. So it's not about quantity. It's always about quality, okay? And if you can get it down to one page and you want a maximum of maybe three to four bullet points per section, and I'm kind of jumping ahead with other tips, but you do not, you definitely do not want the three page, five page, six page resume is so antiquated. It's so 1965 in the 21st century, one to two pages and only the best of the best. What I call this, and I tell my clients this all the time, I say you need to deploy what I like to call a dessert first mentality. Okay. So what does that mean? A dessert first mentality. You got to skip the hors d'oeuvres. You got to skip the appetizers. You got to skip even the meal, only the good stuff, only the good stuff, the best stuff first. Okay. Most of you guys, you save the best for last in your conveyances. The best stuff need to be right at the top. Nobody reads resumes anymore. I've been doing this for 28 plus years. Nobody, even before technology, even before our attention deficit in this country, specifically the US, has gone down the toilet, it was imperative to make sure that you have a concise document. It's even more 10x imperative to have that now that technology has created this attention deficit you know, uh, zeitgeist that we're in right now. It's just a fact. Dessert first mentality, only the best of the best. And if you need my help, reach out to me, go to professornez.com or reach out to me on LinkedIn. You'll see all my recommendations. I've got 164 plus recommendations from actual clients who have received actual results, gotten the jobs that they wanted, gotten interviews that they wanted, gotten so many opportunities that they never got before. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. You'll see everything. LinkedIn is like my virtual business card. I tell my clients all the time, it should be your virtual business card. Good to see you, uh, H-A-T-E uh, on, uh, on Twitch. Good to see you. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you so much for being here. So, so 
keep your resume just to one or two. I can't believe we've only gotten through two tips. It's already what? My God, Nez, you got to get more time management. It's already 40 minutes into it. <laughs> We're never going to get through this. No, we are. I promise. This is going to get better and better. Who is actually getting some serious wisdom grenades right now dropped on their noggin? Let me know in the chat if any of this is valuable. Let me know. I want to know. Let me know in the comments if any of this is valuable. I want to hear it from you. Midnight Madness says, I might actually add this to my favorites. I've always had trouble with my resume. You should add this to your favorites. Of course you should. What's the matter with you, uh, uh, Midnight Madness? Absolutely you should. Um, this, and again, and again, and obviously I'm kidding, Charlie Dog. You know, I love you. But again, this relates to, okay, this relates to uh, really the mindset, the psychology of consumption, how people consume information okay, in the 21st century. This is how people consume information in the 21st century. You've got to adapt to the times that you're living in. If you don't adapt, it's over. Who's getting a lot of value from this? Thank you so much for that comment, by the way, Charlie Dog. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Who is getting extreme value from this? I'm going to keep cooking. I'm going to keep going because you know I ain't never going to stop. It's Nez Nation Live. Okay, brought to you by beyondtheboxacademy.com. This is the ultimate training academy online. We've got courses in personal branding, mindset mastery, communications, writing, job search. It's the ultimate academy taught by yours truly, somebody who teaches at Chapman University, who's, t who's taught at the Economics and Business School at Cal State Fullerton, Laverne University, 28 plus years of experience. I run my own agency. It's a digital consulting agency called Professor Nez Consultancy. And uh, that's where I do executive career coach and personal branding coaching, helping you get your mindset and your message right so you can impact the right audience. Chris says, great comment here by Chris. G I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Chris. If I'm not, correct me. Reaffirming info that I know but haven't adapted. The time is now. Thank you so much. And you know what, Chris? You bring up an amazing point. Thank you so much on LinkedIn, Chris. Chris, you bring up an amazing, amazing point. And that is that, uh, you know, th none of this stuff really is. I mean, none of this stuff is is anything like eye-opening or eye-catching or, or even original. I always say this. I always say that my teaching style is that of being the eternal reminder. What does that mean? I'm just an eternal reminder. There's nothing original about me. There's nothing even special about Professor Nez, Okay. There's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of career coaches. There's plenty of professionals that are amazing and have exemplary communication skills that know all this and can teach you all this stuff. There's plenty of stuff on the internet that you can find that will teach you all this stuff. But nobody can deliver it the way that I can. Nobody can communicate it the way I can. It's unique to me, and I, I love that. I'm not saying original, but unique to me. And I love being that reminder because I think that human beings suffer from what I like to call permanent temporary amnesia. Um, we forget things very, very easily. That's what happens. And we forget things often. So uh, I'm very, very happy to hear you say that. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that, uh, uh, Chris. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yes, Chris. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, oh, great. So Jason says, thank you, Jason, for your comment. Jason says, uh, I advised a family member to call out contract work that has short time frames so the employers don't misinterpret that with someone jumping jobs. Interesting. Yes. I mean, that's, that's something that can communicate those gaps and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's great advice, uh, Jason. I think that's fantastic. And also, here's another thing too, Jason, when it comes to you know, contract work and side hustles or, or, or anything like that, you know, people frown upon, and it really depends on, you got to contextualize it to your audience. People frown upon, you know, uh, um, you know, gaps and things of that nature. You know, there, and th I'm thinking about doing a video on this too, a functional resume versus a chronological resume. Again, remember the two R's, relevancy and recency. Okay, and if you're having problem with recency, then go all in on relevancy. If you're having problem with relevancy, that's a little tougher to handle, but go all in on recency, okay? Just do the best you can. 
And, you know, uh, if you can really encapsulate and embed those two precepts into your functionality, into your conveyance, you're going to be a okay. Nothing to worry about. Thank you, Jason, for the comment. (laughs) Midnight Madness says, careful with that ego there, Nez. I know. (laughs) Thank you. I will. Okay. Thank you. You keep me in check. I love that. Number three, who's ready for tip number three? Number three, we only got through two. (laughs) I've got seven more after this. Number three, use action-oriented language. Use action-oriented language. Use verbs such as executed, developed, managed, led, and so forth. Even for your present position, Notice how there's an ED at the end of all of those verbs. You want to start it off with action-oriented language that communicates achievements. That is the key. Again, do not say responsible for. Don't say that you're, do, don't, don't just do a, a, a kind of numbing list of your duties and responsibilities. Action-oriented language, your best accomplishments, your best achievements, if you can quantify them, even better. And if you have a position or job that's difficult to quantify, I bet you I can help you with that. And just let me know in the chat. So uh, quantified data. And actually, this is number, this is actually number four. <laughs> so number four, it relates to number three. So I'm going to do a, a double whammy here. Number, number three is use action-oriented language, okay? Number four is use data and examples, so you should be able to highlight your accomplishments in your both your current and past with actual data, quantifiable data pre- preferably, and examples that support them, right? So here's an example. Increase sales by 22% in Q1 by innovating, you know, uh, the culture with a brand new sales strategy and tactic uh, that I was able to apply to multiple teams. That's a great bullet point. Okay, because you've, you've started with an action verb, you've listed something quantifiable, and you've given an example. Now, you don't want to always go too far into the example and elaborate, and just be careful of that. Again, going back to tip number one, be concise, be succinct. That is the key. But, but you know, sometimes certain quantifiable figures, they actually warrant that, uh, they actually warrant uh, you giving a little bit more evidentiary examples so that people can actually sink their teeth into it. It becomes more, you know, in, in, in creative writing, we call this painting that vivid picture. How can you paint a vivid picture if you're not being very detail oriented? If you're just, if you're just saying, Hey, I generated a lot of sales. Well, okay. What does that mean? That's too vague. Be specific. You know, I increased sales or generated 22% more, uh, more, uh, in, in revenue in 2019 than the previous year, uh, Y O Y year over year. Right. Or, you know, it's, it's about giving it context. It's about providing actual concrete data. That's extremely, extremely important. Anchor. I think I'm saying that right. Anchor says great info. Especially put best first mentality. Yeah, fortunately, I have a, I am having a one-page resume, but now I have more room for improving. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Encore. You're welcome. And if you need more help than that, let me know because I am an executive career coach. Just go to my LinkedIn profile and I have helped thousands of clients uh, to get the kind of conveyance and the proper you know identification of who they are in that two-dimensional setting. Ruben Gutierrez on YouTube. So good to see you, Ruben. How are you, sir? Make sure you smash that smash button. It's the first time we've gone live in prime time in a long time. And maybe it's a little bit too late in prime time because we're not seeing a lot of people here right now. Have you shared this out, y'all? Don't forget, sharing is caring. This is some serious content, brain-busting content that could help somebody you know. And believe you me, they will thank you for it because nobody delivers the goods like Nez does. Nobody on the planet. So make sure that you share this out. Share this out with your audience. They will thank you for it. You'll look like a hero in front of your audience. Okay, number five. Number five. This is a really, really big one. And again, I may have already covered this. And so we might be able to jump through these a little bit quicker. Number five. Make significant information quick and easy to find. Make 
pertinent information, quick and easy to find. Avoid the fluff. Again, this goes back. I did already mention this. Dessert first mentality. Get right to the good stuff. Nobody has time for the fluff. This is not an F. Scott Fitzgerald short story. We don't need an entire story or background about, and don't use these phrases like excellent communicator, works well with others. That stuff is 1982. It's over. Nobody uses that stuff anymore in their resume. Quantitative, action-oriented achievements that get quick and right to the point and display the best stuff first. So make that pertinent information uh, come straight up to the top. People need to see that stuff immediately. So good to see you, Ruben. So good to see you, Ruben. And your design too, your design. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about design in just a second, sort of the second half of these 10 unreal tips, phenomenal tips for resume mastery. Uh, uh, on how to, you know, really build the perfect template. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about design too. You want to create a design that has white space, that is easy to read, that is easy to scan. It's pleasant to the eyes. It should not be chunky, funky paragraphs with zero white space and just this big glob. I'm going to use an example here that I think everybody's going to be able to relate to. If you've ever received an email, y'all, if you've ever if you've ever received an email where it's just this long from a coworker or whoever usually it's from a coworker and it's this long cacophony of just words 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 this huge huge uh 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 you know chunky funky paragraph if you're like me if i get an email like that i don't even read it i mean i just delete it <laughs> i don't even read it um, but if you take that same paragraph, that same email, and you break it up into white space, watch what happens. It becomes much more absorbable, much more readable, much more, um, your, your receiver is more able to be receptive to it. So uh, that's extremely, extremely important. Um, I would not, uh, Luis, Luis says, get a template from Microsoft Resume. I would be careful with those free templates. Uh, a lot of those free templates um, can be, you know, there's a lot of great examples online, but but some of those free templates that you get on like Microsoft or 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 you know even Pages uh, or um, you know Google Docs or whatever, be leery of that because a lot of those designs are not, you know, uh, there's a reason why they're free. Let's put it that way. Just be just be careful with those. Um, Jessica says long-term employment with several different positions, bullet points for each. Uh, I'll come to that in just a second. Great question, Jessica. Encore says, could you please quote example as well? Yeah. So, 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 uh, give me a specific on that Encore. Are you talking about my prices quotes? Let me, I hope I'm understanding your question. Absolutely, Chris. Absolutely, Chris. And if you need any help, let me know, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you, Chris. Um, yeah, just be leery with some of those free templates is, is all I would say, Luis, uh, because some of those templates can, you know, there's, they're, they're not as designed with the proper mentality in mind for crafting a compelling message to a specific audience. So just be leery of that and make sure you do your due diligence. Always, always, always do your due diligence. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. So let me get to, uh, let me get to Jessica's question. Um, uh, before I do, Jessica, so making significant information quick and easy to find the design of your resume is extremely important. Okay. You want to compartmentalize things as best as possible and you want to make sure that it's does not create friction for your audience. You want to create a frictionless resume, just like a frictionless website, just like a frictionless landing page, just like a frictionless, you know, uh, opt in. It should not be difficult. I say this, I've been saying this to my writing students, not just my business communication students, but my writing students, my nonfiction writing students at Chapman for years. If your audience has to work at all, I mean, even for a molecule, if they have to expend even one molecule of energy trying to figure out who you are, what you do, and how you can help them, it's over. They're gone. Before you even blink, 
they are gone to the next resume. So you need to really fine tune, make sure you have that white space, make sure you have a document that is frictionless, where as your eyeballs are scanning and scrolling this document, even your LinkedIn profile too, you can look at my LinkedIn profile as an example. It is clear as day who this person is, who are you, why should I pay attention to you, and what problem can you solve? Those three things. That is tantamount to your success. Write those three things down. Who are you? I mean, who are you? I don't know who you are. I'm Professor Nez. I help people with their mindset and their messaging, building their online reputation so that they can elevate their career and grow their business. Simple. You need to have an elevator pitch, right? Number two, okay, number two. Why am I paying attention to you? Because I can help you get the results that you need. I can help you to get to that level that you're looking for. I can help you change what, whatever your challenge obstacle is. I can help you overcome that. Number three, what problem can you solve specifically? Boom. So you've got to answer those questions. Write those three things down. Who are you? Why am I paying attention to you? And what problem can you solve? This is huge. What makes you unique amongst the other personal branding and career coaches? What makes you unique amongst the other architects? What makes you unique as a human resources leader, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense, guys? Extremely important stuff. I mean, this is, this, this, this is one you're going to want to watch over and over and over again. I guarantee you, you're going to want to watch this over and over again, especially when this gets released on the podcast. And again, just a quick reminder Nez Nation Live, the Personal Branding 101 podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, I think it's called now. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Stitcher. We're on SoundCloud. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there. Just open up your podcast app and search for Nez Nation Live, the hashtag Nez Nation Live, Personal Branding 101. Make sure you hit subscribe and you, you're going to get brain busting content on a weekly basis pretty much the best in personal branding and modern 21st century business and career communications. What, what else could you, what else do you need? <laughs> what else do you need for crying out loud? I mean, what a, what a bombastic gift and you don't have to pay a penny. Holy macadamia nut dropping serious wisdom grenades. Okay. Jessica, Jessica's question really quickly. Yes. The answer is yes. Um, if you have a long-term employment and it's over 10 years or over seven or eight years, if it's under seven or eight years, then just, I would just say place the most recent because again, recency and relevancy. But yeah, if you've got like some, I've had, I have a lot of clients that are post 50, post 60, and they have 10, you know, positions in one company. You know, they just climbed the ladder for the past 25 years. Well then, yes, you should have bullet points for each position, but I'm going to talk about that in just a second. How many bullet points? What kind of bullet points? What should they say? Here we go. Uh, here comes tip number, I think we're on tip number six, PDF formatting, PDF formatting. Always send your resume, preferably in a PDF. Don't use Apple pages. Some people ask for Microsoft Word, not all people do. And definitely don't use Google Docs. And here's another thing too. Please, for the love of God, do not post your resume on your LinkedIn page. Like it's just plastered there like some cheap flyer. It looks terrible. It reeks of desperation. LinkedIn is a different animal than your resume, okay? LinkedIn is more of your story, more of your narrative, more encompassing of your value proposition. It's not just a place, a, a resume repository. It's an actual branding platform. Go to my LinkedIn profile, Professor. just search Professor Nez on LinkedIn, and you'll find me there. Or go to linkedin.com uh, forward slash in forward slash Professor Nez, I think. I think that's my URL. Um, anyway, just search for it. So many people, I see this all the time. They, they, they just plaster their resume on their LinkedIn profile and, 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 and that's it. And it just, it just, first of all, people can steal your info. People can steal your information. They can steal your bullet points, all that hard work you put into it, A. And B, it just doesn't, it's not very becoming. And it also demonstrates you don't understand how LinkedIn works. LinkedIn is not just a resume plaster board. LinkedIn is about telling your story, telling your narrative, communicating your vision, and communicating your value. It's a personal branding content platform. 
And so you've got to be able to create that value. Okay, through your banner, through your profile, through your headline, through your about page, through your experience, through your uh, recommendations and testimonials. I mean, to me, it's a virtual business card. And I just throw that out when people want to say, hey, Nez, where do I go to find out about you? Or how do I... Hey, Nez, what can, I, uh, what can I check out to learn more about you? Go to my LinkedIn profile. It's easy. Open up your phone. Go to my LinkedIn profile. Read my about section. Check out my headline. Check out my testimonials. You want to hire me? Boom. My website's there. I've got videos there. I've got links there. Bada boom, bada bing. It's all there. LinkedIn is right now, and LinkedIn, I hope you're listening to this. LinkedIn is, to me, the future of the resume. As a matter of fact, I think the resume is going to be extinct probably in the next, if it's not extinct already, in the next four to five years, definitely it's going to become extinct. Your social media profiles are going to become your resume. Your content, your demonstration is going to be your resume. Your ability to show, not tell, show, three-dimensionalize who you are is going to be your resume. So, uh, and I'll share a quick stat with you. All of you guys looking for new careers, all of you guys on the job hunt and the job search, I'm going to share a stat with you right here and go verify this. Verify this in the real world. Do some research. Do your own due diligence. I'm going to share with you this unbelievable stat right now. Did you know, did you know that 92%, 92% of employers will search your social media profiles during the job interview process. 92%. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same reason why Amazon owns the world. It's the same reason why Netflix has Hollywood running scared. This is the digital revolution incarnate. LinkedIn is the ultimate branding platform for you to showcase your talents, showcase your skills, communicate your vision, communicate your narrative. If you don't have, if you only have a good resume or a standard resume and your LinkedIn is not in top shape, that's only, I think, 45% or maybe 49% of the equation. You've got to have a powerful LinkedIn brand. And if you go to my YouTube channel, whoops, focus. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've got some videos on how to brand yourself on LinkedIn, how to create and build a reputation. Also, of course, I am a personal branding coach. I am a LinkedIn expert. So if you want to reach out to me for personal one-on-one coaching, reach out to me on LinkedIn or go to professornez.com or email me, nez at professornez.com. I'm happy to help you. Midnight Bet Madness says, even better if your problem solving in your current position helps with problem solving in the position you're applying for. I love that. Very, very well said. Luis says, debating resume style. I was told that they don't like certain style and the other person in the same department said they like that style. I was doing a test research. Why? I'm actually going to do a video on that, Luis. So uh, absolutely, I will definitely. Hey, Super Dave in the house. Good to see you, Super Dave on YouTube. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. If you're on LinkedIn and you're just joining us, leave a comment. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're joining us from. What city are you joining us from? Let me know if you have any questions. We're talking about mastering your message. I'm busting 10 brain-stopping tips on how to create the perfect resume. Hello? How to create the perfect resume right here. You don't have to go anywhere else. This is it. This is the end all and be all. And I'm also going to give you one. You got to stay to the end. This is a biggie. You got to stay to the end. I'm giving you one of the most popular, the most popular tip that traverses the highways and byways of career coaches, executive coaches, recruiters more often than hiring managers, HR directors, and C-level executives. I'm going to actually contradict probably the most popular and the most um, communicated advice on the most, I mean, literally it's, it's the most uh, 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 frequent uh, advice given about resume writing And I absolutely hate it. And I think it's terrible. And I think everybody's making a big mistake if they follow this piece of advice that is extremely popular. So you got to stick around to the end and I'm going to share that with you. Okay, who's ready? We're moving on. We're moving on up. By the way, if you're somebody who likes to listen on ear goggles, 
if you're somebody who likes to listen to voice rather than watch videos and live streams, we do have, ladies and gentlemen, a podcast. It's called the Nez Nation Live Personal Branding 101 Podcast. We're everywhere. Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it. Go subscribe. Okay, we're moving on up. We're moving on up. We're moving on up. So number uh, six was PDF formatting is always preferred. Number seven, your format. Okay, this is, Luis, this could answer your question here. Your format should be clean, simple, and consistent. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, this one, now we're really getting into the nitty gritty. You've got to keep your info, your formatting, clean and organized and simplicity is an art form keep it simple i mean i see some of these resumes you've got like chunk you go graphics and lower thirds and stars zooming in and you've got these highlights and you've got unicorns and pictures and my god just keep it simple quality okay quality resides in simplicity simplicity is an art form people don't have time you want to create a frictionless design, folks. So your formatting is, I mean, I've kind of already mentioned this a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and repeat it. White space, white space. Keep it very, very simple. Keep it very, very clean. Scroll down with your eyeballs. Is it difficult? Get an extra pair of eyes. Hire a career coach. Doesn't have to be me. Hire somebody who can actually give you professional wisdom. Think about it, y'all. The average career right now that's worth anything, you know, you've got to be making in the United States to be even considered middle class. You've got to be making between 80 and 100K a year. I mean, you just have to be, especially if you're living where I live in Southern California. I mean, you can't even really live on 80K a year in Southern California. So, so if you're going to be making or you're looking for that type of position that's going to afford you a six-figure salary... It makes sense to invest in somebody who can help you get there. Even if it is a couple thousand dollars, that's less than 2%, less than 1% of what you're going to be getting in return. So, so think about that, guys. Get an extra pair of eyes. Don't just, you know, go by your own vision, which is myopic and biased because this is based on neuroscience. I mean, there's a reason why Michael Jordan has a coach. There's a reason why Serena Williams has a coach. We can't. It's based on neuroscience. We can't give ourselves that same pure level of objectivity because we're too emotionally invested in who we are. So we're naturally biased. Even if you're cognizant of this or not, you're naturally biased, okay, to your own, your own, uh, 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 your own self, your own, your own utterances, your own conveyances, your own communicai. So, so it helps to have somebody who's unbiased and objective. Leave a comment if you're watching on LinkedIn. Let me know where you are watching us from. Let me know where you're joining from. Let me know what you think of this massively dynamic and unbelievably high quality, high content that you're getting right now. And let me know if you have any resume tips that you'd like to share. Leave them in the comments. Even if you're watching this on a replay, leave them in the comments. When it comes to design, think of frictionless. Think of frictionless. It should be easy to scan. It should be easy to kind of, you know, really digest in quick, quick snackable sizes. Okay, that's really, really important. Okay, number eight, we're getting close to the end. And then I'm going to tell you the number one piece of advice that is the most popular that it's given to you. So there's an 11th, you know, kind of tip, which is really a mistake, I think but it's given as strong advice, the most frequent advice that's given to you. So stick around for that. Number eight, and this seems kind of obvious, but it's not so obvious, gang. And that is always check for typos. Holy macadamia nut. I cannot tell you how bad it looks if you've got typos on your uh, resume or your LinkedIn profile. Um, I think it looks terrible when people are creating content and in their copywriting. And I've done this before. I'm not saying I've I've made this mistake many a many a time. Um, always, always, always reread, reread, reread before you click send. Always, always check for spelling, check for typos, check for grammar, syntax, mechanics. Always, always. And by the way, here's another bonus tip. Can we just finally get rid of the periods at the end of bullet points? 
I know it's more idiosyncratic, but I think it's becoming more universally adopted. Do not, I repeat, do not put periods at the end of your bullet points. Periods belong at the end of sentences, not bullet points. Who's with me on that? I do that all the time for my clients, and I think not only does it look better aesthetically, but syntactically it's more apt. So make sure, I cannot tell you, you could be a four-time, you know, a Rhodes Scholar, or you could be a major executive at a major tech firm. And if you've got typos and you've got all sorts of little minuscule, some may even call them trivial errors, uh, it really, really looks bad. And I'm going to share a survey here from CareerBuilder where they say 58% of resumes have typos. So if you're not wary of them, okay, a hiring manager may think, well, this person, how can I hire this person? They don't pay attention to the details. You've heard the phrase, the devil's in the details. You best believe it. Uh, Let's see. Louis says, I agree. I've been doing resume for 10 years or more and no one has complained yet. Very nice. Very nice, Louis. Yeah, if you have, I mean, if you're watching this, especially if you're watching this on the replay, Make sure that you uh, leave in the comments. If you've got some awesome stellar resume tips that maybe I didn't cover or you'd like to engage in a discourse, maybe disagree with some of these or maybe add to some of these, please leave them in the chat. Leave them in the comments. I come back and I respond to everybody. So please leave them in the chat. And make sure you're hitting that like button or you're hitting that celebrate button or that insight button on LinkedIn. I love the LinkedIn reactions. I think it's fantastic. Make sure that you're smashing that. Smash that button. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And let me know where you're joining us from too. I want to I wanna welcome you to our Nez Nation family. We're bringing more humanness to this digitalness. We're talking about mindset and messaging. Why I feel communications are not the soft skills, but the essential skills. You ask anybody who is successful and they will tell you communication played a large part in their ability to succeed. If you don't know how to communicate who you are, what problem you can solve, and why people should be paying attention to you, to me, you've got goose egg. Nada. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Moving on. Moving on. Let me know in the chat where you're at, especially on LinkedIn and YouTube. <laughs> nah, the devil's in the management. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Charlie Dog. Charlie, it's so good to see you, man. I- I'm so happy to see you guys. Dave is in the house. Super Dave is in the house. I'm getting so excited. I'm about to bust my mic. (laughs) So great to see you guys. Yes, Luis. And Luis says, another great comment. Smash that button. You're absolutely right, Dave. Tell everybody to smash that smash button. Uh, Luis says, make sure that your format is consistent. Yes, don't be all over the place. Don't have different font sizes. I mean, you've got like, you know, your, your, your experience section has... You know, the job description is one font size. Your title is another font size. The name of the company is another font size. The dates you were there is, I mean, that's just a recipe for disaster. So yes, consistency and simplicity. That is the name of the game, consistency and simplicity. So if you can envelop those two things, you're going to be in fuego, which is Spanish for fire. You're going to be on fire. Okay, number, number eight. Uh, number, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Number nine. We're on number nine. Use bullet points whenever possible. I think, um, somebody asked this earlier. I think it was Jessica use bullet points whenever possible. They make the document more interesting for the reader. You want to break up those large chunks of text paragraphs. Uh, uh-uh. uh, bullet points. Yes. Why bullet points create a more scannable document bullet points create a more readable document chunky funky monkey paragraphs is bad boogie you don't want that it will dissuade your reader from continuing to read it will force them to go on to the next resume you do not want that so use bullet points as much as possible when you're listing your expertise when you're listing your skill section when you're listing your experience when you're going through your jobs Bullet, bullet, bullet. Bullet points are professional and they're much, much uh, uh, more conducive to being absorbed and more readily received, okay? Very, very important. And then last but not least, focus on results. This is a big one. Last but not least. And then remember, I'm gonna get to the number one mistake that everybody makes. 
that's given as the best advice, and I know most of you guys have gotten this piece of advice, focus on results and impact, okay? You need to present your account. I'm gonna give you a formula. I want you to write this down. I'm gonna give you a very specific formula that Google executive Laszlo Bach says. You should present your accomplishments in these terms. Accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z. I'm gonna say that one more time. Accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z. So for example, you wanna start with an active verb, okay? Numerically measure what you accomplished and provide a baseline for comparison and detail what you did to achieve that goal. So for example, instead of saying something like achieved annual business plan commitments for volumes, you know, wholesale and selling expenses, which is very, very general, okay? You wanna be more specific and if you can add quantifiable details, all the better. As a team member contributed to a 21% increase in advertiser spend by achieving 158% of target number uh, uh, of customer contacts. So now you've got those, now you've got those measurable effects. Okay, so action verb, what was the achievement? How did you come by it? Think of it that way. Action verb, quantifiable achievement and give a little bit of detail. Not a lot, just a little bit of detail to back that up. Okay, one more time, because this is so important, Nez Nation. Action verb, quantifiable accomplishment, and a little bit of context. That's even better. So this is the even easier formula, the easiest formula, okay? Action verb, achievement, context. Just keep it concise. Going back to one of our earlier points, keep it concise, avoid the fluff relevancy and recency, keep it succinct, mindset, dessert first, forget the hors d'oeuvres, forget the appetizers, forget even the meal, only the good stuff, baby, only the good stuff. How many people are absolutely uh, uh, ecstatic that they were able to watch this live or watch this on the replay? How many people are with Professor Nez right now that they got a lot of value from this stream? I just gave you 10, count them 10, monstrously effective, actionable, applicable, tangible, concrete tips and strategies on how to create the perfect resume template, how to build in this perfect resume writing masterclass. Let me know in the chat if you have any questions, and then I'm going to jump into that bonus tip number 11 which is, thank you so much for the reactions. I want to see more reactions on LinkedIn. More reactions. Click that, tap that, tap that reaction. Tap that thumb up. Tap that insight. Tap that curious. <laughs> I love the reactions. Make sure you tap that. <laughs> Charlie Dog says, what did you say? Like receiving a commander's coin for moving a backlog a ahead of the requested deadline. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. That's good. Relevancy relevancy and recency. That is the name of the game. Relevancy and recency. That is what you want, y'all. You want relevancy and you want recency. It's extremely important. Thank you so much for the reactions, LinkedIn. I really appreciate it. Periscope, where are you? Twitch, where are you? We had a few people on Twitch. Uh, Facebook, we must not be on Facebook. I don't know if we're on Facebook. Uh, YouTube, where are you? I want to, I want to, I want to see some, I want to see some, uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's somebody from Twitch. <laughs> oh, really? Is that a fact? It's very nice. Very nice. I don't even know how to pronounce your name, but he said, I pooped my pants in my accounting class today. It was smelly and very embarrassing. How do I get past this? Well, I guess <clears throat> happens, right? Uh, I think you're going to be just fine. I think you're going to work yourself through it. Not a big deal. It happens. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> Thank you, Twitch, for jumping in the game. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to give you, last but not least, I'm going to give you what I think is probably the worst advice you could get, but it seems to be the most popular advice given by recruiters and a lot of so-called career coaches, and that is this. How many of you, I want to ask you guys in the chat right now, let me know in the comments, 
How many of you, give me a thumbs up emoji, okay, in the chat, or give me a Y for yes in the chat. How many of you have, and I'll go through the list one more time after we're done. How many of you have have gotten this piece of advice? You need to tailor your resume to the job description. Look at the job description and tailor your resume according to that. Let me know in the chat. Give me a thumbs up or give me a why if you've ever received this advice. This is probably the most popular, the most frequent advice that is given to career candidates, job seekers, and I think it's absolute hogwash. I think it's absolute hogwash. So let me know in the chat if you have received this type of uh, uh, advice before. There was even an article recently from a Google recruiter who, uh, you know, who said that you should look at the job description and tailor your resume to the job description. Okay, Jessica gives me a thumbs up. Charlie gives me a thumbs up. Todd.live is in the house. How you doing, Todd? Good to see you on YouTube. Todd is in the house. We're live on LinkedIn as well. Todd, go check out LinkedIn Live. We're live on LinkedIn as well because I know you're on your phone probably, right? Let me know how I'm coming through on LinkedIn. I'd really appreciate that. So this is the most popular advice that is given for your resume and yours truly thinks it's the worst piece of advice. It's absolutely the worst piece of advice that I think that you could give any job candidate. So essentially what you're saying, okay, when you say that you should acclimate your resume to the job description, it's basically a euphemism for copy paste. Even if you think you're being clever, even if you think that, oh, you know what? I can manipulate some of the words here and play around. You're engaging in embellishment. You're engaging in if inauthenticity. See, I don't create resumes and LinkedIn brands that are just based on a job position. I create LinkedIn brands and resumes that encapsulate you. Who are you? What problem can you solve? What makes you unique? Why should I pay attention to you? Now, that doesn't mean that I don't do industry research or I don't do field research, keyword research. Of course, I do all that stuff because I'm a professional. I'm the best at what I do. But this whole idea of tailoring to the job, it pigeonholes you and it confines you. And essentially, you're telling people to engage in verbal gymnastics and be smart and clever and just manipulate verbiage as opposed to writing something that is authentically themselves, that clearly demonstrates who they uniquely are and what they can bring to the table. That's what I'm interested in. If I'm hiring somebody, okay, and let me know what you think. I'd love your thoughts in the comments. If I'm hiring somebody and what I see is that they just literally, you know, uh, I mean, especially because if it's me, it's my business. I've probably written the job post. <laughs> I've probably written the job description or I've hired somebody to write the job description, but I've had some input on it. If I see somebody and it's just a, it's just a, a, a kind of crossword puzzle of what I put in the job post, my first instinct is to recoil. I would, I would recoil from that. And I would say, no, that, that, that doesn't interest me. Who are you? Who exactly are you? Again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do field research. I'm not saying that you don't do industry research. I'm not saying that you don't, you know, apply to the job that fits who you are. But I believe that your resume should encapsulate you, not a job position. That's what I think. That's fine if you disagree with me. That's fine. I would love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm the end all be all, but you know, 28 plus years of business communications and being an executive career coach and a personal branding coach. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and I've been getting results for my clients. So that's fine. If you disagree with it, I respect you. I, I want you to disagree with me as a matter of fact. I mean, tell me why, give me a good reason why. Um, tailoring your, your resume just to a job post. And I was expecting this. That's fine. Good to see you, Craig. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, that's fine. If you think that that, if, if you think that that's wrong, I have no problem with that. But, you know, uh, you know, speaking from somebody who has not only helped candidates and helped clients get the position that they desire, but also somebody who has hired people for the last 20 years, I want to see somebody who is uniquely authentically themselves. I want, I want to hire a human being. I don't want to hire a job post. 
I want to hire a human being that I think really can bring their own unique vision and value to what I want them to do. And they have really done their due diligence, okay, in presenting themselves as somebody who can solve my problem, my obstacle, my hurdle, my need. Again, don't, I'm going to say this again. I said this at the top. Don't think of yourself, uh, Todd, if you just go to my profile, go to my profile on LinkedIn, you should be able to see the, uh, the live video there. As a matter of fact, I'll see if I can't share the actual uh, live video here on YouTube. Actually, I don't think it'll let me share it on LinkedIn or on, uh, on, on YouTube. But just in case you're interested, yeah, it won't, for some reason, it won't let me share the URL. But if you're interested, just go to my profile and you should be able to see that. You should be able to see that there. Uh, Ninja Brank Official on Twitch. Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, so anyway, this is this has been really, really popular, frequent advice. Good to see you, Alec Maddox. How are you doing, Alec? Good to see you. Alec was a client of mine, is a client of mine. You know, I, I build long-term relationships. I don't like to say former client. I always like to say my client. Thank you. Good to see you, Alec. Alec's gotten amazing results working with me. How are you doing, Alec? I hope you're doing well. Make sure you smash the smash button. Smash those... Those, uh, those reaction buttons, those insight buttons, those celebration buttons, the heart, the like. Make sure you hit those, smash those. I don't think that a resume should just encapsulate a job. I think a resume should encapsulate you. I want to know who you are. I want to know your story. I want to know what your achievements are. And of course, you want to translate them in a way that is relevant, obviously. But when I hear somebody say, look at the job post and tailor your resume to the job and look at the description of the job post and then tailor your bullet points. I mean, I've actually had executive recruiters say this to my clients, you know, look at the bullet, look at the, 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 the description and tailor your bullet points to the description. I think you're asking people, okay, to engage in embellishment. You're asking people to engage in verbal gymnastics or linguistics, Okay, and it's it's going to come across as inauthentic. I just don't buy it. I don't believe in it. Okay, and I've gotten amazing results for my clients by creating unique, personalized, customized resumes and LinkedIn brands that encapsulate their value proposition, not just a copy paste from a job description. Now, whether you agree with that or or don't disagree or, or disagree with that i respect you and i love you and i have no problem with you this is a conversation if we're going to have a real conversation it's not all just about agreeing and nodding your head all the time but you know i still have yet to see uh an example of you know tailoring a job to just a job post that works better than my system or works better than what i think uh really gets you to where you need to go if you have any questions right now, my God, we've been live for over an hour and a half. My goodness. If you have, or almost an hour and a half. If you have any questions right now on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Periscope, on Facebook. I don't know if we're on Facebook. Are we live on Facebook? Oh yeah, we are live on Facebook too. Okay, I didn't see, I didn't know if we were live on Facebook. If you have any questions, any comments, I'm going to review the top 10 tips Okay, I'm going to just go through them one more time as kind of in summation, if you will. But if you have any questions for me, if you have any questions at all, if you want to create a compelling, awesome LinkedIn brand and resume that really communicates who you are and why people should pay attention to you and what problem you can solve, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Reach out to me at professornez.com. Email me at nez at professornez.com. That's nez, N-E-Z, at professornez.com or just Google Professor Nez. You'll find all my stuff. You could just, that's the simplest way to do it. But if you're watching on LinkedIn live right now, so great to have you guys with us. If you're watching on LinkedIn live right now, please, by all means, uh, please make sure that you uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Make sure that you, you can message me on LinkedIn. I'm all ears. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Uh, and if you need help with anything, I'm here for you. Uh, and I would love to work with you. Uh, but if not, I do free content every single week. I am busting free content. 
I'm not sure if we're going to make this our new weekly uh, prime time. We might want to go a little bit earlier than uh, we went live at 6 p.m. Pacific. It is now almost 7.30 Pacific time. Uh, that would be 10.30 Eastern time. Uh, and by the way, if you're live on LinkedIn or YouTube, let me know where you're watching uh, from. Where are you at? Let me know your location. And I would love to know where you're watching me from, uh, especially on LinkedIn, because I know LinkedIn right now, there's a lot of great, I've, I've been getting a lot of great uh, uh, feedback and comments and, and emails and messages from Australia, New Zealand, the UK, India. You know, I know that LinkedIn does, there's a great contingency uh, in the South Pacific uh, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I mean, as well as really everywhere. I mean, they're almost at 700 million members. They should be reaching a billion members by 2021. Stephanie Kimber in the house. Good to see you, Stephanie. I can't wait to work with you. I can't wait to create an awesome LinkedIn brand and a killer, stunning, unique, jaw-dropping resume for you, Stephanie Kimber. And SoCal, I'm in SoCal myself. Great to see you, uh, 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 Stephanie. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Roderick McLeod in Los Angeles, CTO. Roderick, when are you going to hire me for crying out loud? Roderick, I know you want to work with me. You want to work with the best of the best. <laughs> As you can see, I'm nothing if not humble. <laughs> I'm a pillar of modesty, am I not? Okay, I'm just having a little bit of fun. Jonathan Jerry says the OC. Very cool. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Good to see you guys. Uh, Electric Kraychug over on Twitch. Good to see you. Welcome. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait, Stephanie. Don't work too hard on that resume. Let me do all the heavy lifting. I'll take get good care of you. Let me go over really quickly. Still, uh, uh, those of you on LinkedIn and YouTube, let me know where you're joining me from. And uh, I want to know where you're coming in from because it always delights me. And if you have any last minute questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, let me go through the top 10 tips one more time. And just kind of in summation. And then Jessica, thank you so much. Jessica has a question. And I I'm going to get to that in just a second. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Midnight. Midnight says, I think this will actually help my resume stick out better in a work area that's more about who you know, which I hate. Yeah. And you know, it's not, it's not easy to sort of quote unquote and I don't like to say, I don't like to say sell yourself because it's, you know, you're not selling yourself. And as a matter of fact, I should probably do a whole live stream on this. Sales is not what you think it is. Okay. Sales is not a bad thing. A, hey, there's nothing wrong with selling. As a matter of fact, the economy would come to a halt if there was zero sales. Sales are what makes a business. The problem is, is the interpretation of sales has become very derogatory and, you know, foreboding. Um, people have a bad taste in their mouth when they think of sales. When they think of sales, they think of, you know, the slick, oil, you know, snake oil salesman, or they think of somebody who's just out for money and, and just out to rob you blind. Look, a true salesman, a true salesman, a true business that thrives, that is successful, predicated upon integrity, ethos, credibility, and trust, Sales is just telling your story effectively. That's all sales really is. It's storytelling, okay? And whoever can, can, can tell a story that resonates better with them is going to get the transaction, okay? When I get on a phone call with a prospective client or customer or what have you, I'm just telling my story. I'm trying to be understood. If you're trying to sell and you're trying to get the money, it's going to stink. The phone is going to stink. It's going to smell. People are, don't underestimate your audience. People are not stupid, okay? They know, they can smell it cooking a million miles away when you're just out for the dollar bills, okay? A true professional, a true salesman, a true business owner, okay, doesn't sell at all. That's why I believe in branding. I believe in content marketing. I believe in inbound marketing. I believe in content creation because it's pull, not push, you're drawing people to you, like-minded people, people who your message resonates with. So true sales is just storytelling. It's effective storytelling. And storytelling is not conversion. Storytelling is not sales. Storytelling is making sure that that person understands who you are, why they should pay attention to you, and what problem you can solve, period. End of story. That's it. Jessica, I'm going to get to your question. 
I'm going to get to your question. Like PewDiePie's big brain, electric cray chug guy. Fantastic. That's great. PewDiePie just passed an amazing milestone, 100 million subscribers. I'm going to beat you, PewDiePie. I'm going to beat you one of these days because I ain't never going to stop. Yes, I'm a writing professor, and I just use the word ain't. I ain't never going to stop. I'm going to keep going and going and going. I'm like a locomotive in your chest. You can't stop Nez Nation. Never. You can't stop Nez Nation. Don't forget, follow the hashtag Nez Nation on LinkedIn for brain-busting content coming at you weekly, sometimes daily, sometimes hourly. Let's go through the list. So number one, be concise. Don't be afraid to show off a little bit. Not crazy. Again, be concise, but don't forget to show off a little bit. It's the one place that's warranted to show off. Number two, keep your resume to just one or two pages. Eight to 10 years relevant recent experience. The rest you can speak to in the interview. Number three, use action-oriented language. Don't say responsible for. Keep it tight. Keep it actionable. Keep it fast. You see the common theme? Speed, speed. Respect people's time. Nobody has time to read anything anymore. There's a reason why video content and voice content are taking over life because nobody has time to read anymore. I'm not saying books are becoming obsolete. I'm not saying reading is becoming obsolete. I'm just simply saying that nobody has time anymore for long, chunky, funky paragraphs. Okay, number four, use data and examples. Be concrete. Number five, make sure that the best information is quick and easy to find. Don't avoid the fluff. Number six, PDF formatting is always preferred. I still see people submit their resume as a Pages doc, a Google doc. If they ask for Microsoft Word, which is rare, then submit it that way. But even Microsoft Word, PDF is always the preferred method. Uh, number seven, your format should be clean, simple, and consistent. Okay, you don't use black ink on white paper. You don't need to have all this crazy color, crazy graphics, crazy images. You don't need all that stuff, okay? Just keep it simple. Simple, clean, consistent. Okay, number eight, always check for typos. You, I, you'd be amazed. Uh, somebody in here was a CTO. Roderick, I think that was you, right? I just worked with a CTO not that long ago, I think a couple months ago, and literally his resume, okay, was riddled with typos. And I was like, dude, no wonder you're not getting hired, man. You've got to absolutely got to make sure that you got these little errors. That sends a strong message that you don't care about the details. And y'all know the devil's in the details. Okay, so always check for typos. Number nine, use bullets whenever possible. Stay away from paragraphs. Stay away from paragraphs. It's about bullet points. And then last but not least, focus on results and impact. Action verb, achievement, a little bit of context. Increased sales by 22% by implementing a new structure or what have you. So action, okay, start with an action verb with the achievement and then give it a little bit of context. So focus on results and impact. And then if you missed it, Gerald Wade, where the hell have you been all my life, Gerald Wade on YouTube? For the love of God, Gerald Wade. It's so good to see you. How are you, sir? Yeah, you missed it, but you better watch this replay because this was an on fire. And I mean on fire live stream. Absolutely on fire. And you can also check this out at professornez.com. So if you go to professornez.com forward slash live streams, you'll see a cacophony of brain busting content that's going to help you with your mindset and your messaging, helping you to elevate your career and grow your business. That's what this show is all about. We're bringing more humanness to this digitalness because this digitalness gets a bad rap sometimes and it really bums me out because there's a lot of great people on this platform. Okay, Jessica, I want to get to your question on LinkedIn. So Jessica over on LinkedIn asks, uh, should references upon request still be stated on resume thoughts? Excellent, excellent question. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't think references on requests should have ever been on your resume, even predating you know uh, the 21st century. Because essentially, if you say references on request, you're basically telling people that you know you want them to do all the work. Okay, that's not good. And you always supply references in a separate document anyway. Or now that they have all these online platforms, you're going to upload that as a separate document or you're going to list that in a separate you know, slide or page. 
So don't ever put that on your resume. It's also a given that every candidate should possess on their person a couple of references. They always should. So don't ever put references on request. It looks bad and you're basically telling the audience, you need to do the work because I'm not going to give it to you. It's a negative vibe. It speaks a little bit negatively on you. It's unbecoming. Don't do that ever. I wouldn't do it. And I don't tell my clients to do that. Thank you so much, Todd. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Gerald Wade says, I was playing games and watching TV all day. Gerald, what a life you must lead. I woke up at 6.15 a.m. and I've been working ever since. You know, people don't realize, and, and Todd, I hope you're still here and you can actually, um, I hope you're still here and you can actually still, uh, uh, I think Todd, uh, a lot of live streamers, we had Brad earlier, uh, Midnight Madness, Luis, you know, great content creators here, uh, Super Dave. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but not only did I see my clients that I usually see in the morning and then I taught my classes in the afternoon at the university, but then pretty much all of the, everything that I did after that, all of the hours after pretty much two o'clock were spent working on producing this show for you guys. So I have to create the links. I have to create the, the thumbnail. I have to create the title. I have to create the SEO. I have to create the, you know, uh, uh, the production, uh, uh, you know, make sure my mic and my visuals and everything is in order, the marketing, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, it's not just, I mean, I see some of these people who just say, you know, uh, just press the live button, just press the damn live button, right? And just, you know, that's all you need to do is just, put, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you'll, you'll stay connected. And especially if you're on LinkedIn, make sure that you follow the Nez Nation hashtag. And uh, I will definitely, uh, you'll get more brain busting content coming from Nez Nation. And so, uh, and so, yeah, so, so I don't, it's not just as easy as just press the live button. There's a ton of work because you're not only producing the show, you're not only creating the show, you're not only hosting the show. I mean, I'm not Gary V, right? I'm not one of these people who has a production team or, or a, a team in general. You know, I'm doing the marketing, I'm doing the distribution, uh, I'm doing the creation. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing uh, you know, how much goes into it. So yeah, uh, Gerald, <laughs> to get back to you, uh, I'm extremely, uh, extremely uh, envious of you, my friend. <laughs> what a life you must lead. If all you got to do today was play video games and you know, that's, that's just, that's just remarkable. So, uh, I really, really appreciate, uh, uh I really appreciate you, my friend. And by the way, Make sure that you make sure that you actually um, make sure that you actually follow, okay, and make sure that you watch the replay because I really, really, really want to find out what you think. I really want to find out what you uh, what you think of these tips, and I definitely want to find out if you got any value from this. That's another one that I, I want to make sure. So, so, so let me know. Let me know when you uh, when you watch this replay. Anybody else have any other questions? Boy, I had such an amazing time with y'all today. Uh, I really, really mean this, and I I'm so happy that you guys were with me today. Uh, it really means the world to me, and uh, you know, I just I really hope that you guys can. I really hope you guys can keep joining me here on Nez Nation Live again. This is a channel, okay, where we talk about pretty much we talk about mindset and messaging on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, this is what this whole entire channel is about. And I'm very, very excited and happy to have you guys with us. So if you're interested in learning more, I have studied the mind for well over 30 years. Some people don't know this about me, but I've actually uh, suffered from debilitating anxiety and depression as a young man. And so I've studied, uh, you know, mindset. I've studied Western and Eastern psychology. I've worked with uh, psychologists many, many times. And uh, I bring that to the table as well as I'm a lover of words. I'm a lover of language. I'm a writer. I'm an author. Uh, I'm a personal branding coach. And so if, you, if you're interested in that type of content, that is the type of content that we bring on a weekly, weekly basis. Anybody else have any other questions, any other comments, anything at all? 
I just want to say thank you again. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here today. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you guys next time. It's I, Professor Nez, on behalf of the rest of Nez Nation. I wish you nothing but the best. And again, make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you click follow because I'm going to be bringing it. I'm going to be bringing you helpful content that's going to help you with your mindset and messaging on a weekly basis. I can't wait to see you guys. Thank you so much. Love y'all. Have a wonderful evening.